I love a Gemini as a karaoke person because they'll read the crowd and be like, this is the song that's going to set it off, baby. Yes, set the vibe. <laughs> yes. That's so true. And you know, there's performers and then there's people who will engage yes. during that performance. Mm -hmm. And Gemini is such a sociable, engaging person. Yeah. They're not just going to be out there. Like they may not have the best voice, right. but their stage presence and their ability to make eye contact with everyone so they feel seen. Yes. That's a different type of performer. Because you got a Leo performer who's mm -hmm. like, me, everyone look at me. And then there's a Gemini performer that's like you and your special. <laughs> It's your girl Sarah and Maya, and we're charmed and dangerous. You know, because we be charming, and we be dangerous, and we be charming, and we be dangerous, and we be charming, and we be dangerous. <laughs> Today we are going through a fun list. Mm -hmm. We know how much y'all love these lists. Yes. We're talking about the superlatives of each zodiac sign. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty fun. Yeah. So let's get into it. <laughs> This list was actually made by Time Passages, so they have an Instagram. Check them out. Mm -hmm. Let's start cool off app. with Aries. Yes, super cool app. Yeah. I actually love their app. Mm -hmm. Okay, Aries, this is your superlative. Life of the party. Yes. I feel like Aries knows just how to make life exciting. Yeah. You know? No, it's true. They're such an adventurous sign. Yeah. They know how to get the people going. It's true. Get people riled up. They really do. And, and they are quite literally the first sign of the zodiac. They're yeah. known to be the baby. So they're creating that life and they're a fire sign. Fire signs are very spiritual people full of life. Mm -hmm. And Aries being that first cardinal ruled fire sign, they really know how to re energize a space yeah and also be the force that makes you want to achieve your goals mm -hmm. that's very much life-giving yeah in my opinion someone yeah. who lights a fire under your ass yeah 100 <laughs> percent. and aries will do that and they will inspire you by the way that they are moving yeah in life and even at that party you know what yeah. I mean? they're being so confident talking to everyone right um not afraid to dance you know encouraging people to take that yeah. drink maybe go overboard like that is Aries energy, and to me, when someone like that is around, you're bound to have a good time. Yeah. You know? No, you really I make are. the most of that night or the time you have together. Yeah, well, they're putting their confidence behind you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, if you have an Aries around you, they're really making you feel like you can get anything done. Yes. Because they're such motivated individuals. Yes. And that, again, to me, is life of the party. Someone that can light you up and make you feel like you're also the most magnetic person in the room, mm -hmm. you know? 100%. Thank you, Keen, for sponsoring this video. I don't know about you guys, but at the start of every year, I'm curious to know how my year is gonna go. Same, I have so much energy and I'm always looking for guidance stepping into the new year, which is why it's great that we found Keen. I found a tarot reader that answered questions about my life path this year, and with their guidance, I was able to see what area of my life I should focus on. Every year I tend to get a reading anyway, and finding the right one on Keen was super easy. Yeah, whether you have questions about your birth chart, career, or life path like Sarah said, Keen's talented psychics, astrologers, tarot readers can give you the guidance you're looking for. It's super easy to get a reading on Keen. All you have to do is create an account and you'll be able to choose from the hundreds of readers that are online right now. I usually take my time browsing through the readers to see who I vibe with the most. And the best part is, each reader has reviews, so you can feel comfortable knowing that you're well taken care of. Yeah, every reader is unique and has a specialty for your needs, and they can meet via phone or via text, which I love. As a new customer on Keen, you can try your first five-minute reading for $1. We don't want to give you guys too much guidance on questions to ask, because as you guys know, spirituality is something that's very personal. Mm -hmm. So take your time browsing the website, and we hope that your reading helps you feel more grounded in the new year. Renew your well-being now. A Keen Advisor is online to help you. Go to trykeen.com slash charmed and dangerous or click the link in my description to connect with a Keen Advisor. Next we have Taurus and Taurus's superlative is best foodie. I mean, no one can freaking deny that. Yeah. And if you do, shut up. Cancer, okay, maybe dessert. But <laughs> I feel like cancers are really good at dessert. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're good at all foods, comfort foods. but. 
when I think of like the foodie of the zodiac, yeah. I think of Taurus. I think of this Venus ruled sign. One hundred. Someone who quite literally invented being a foodie. Like that is their personality. Yeah. Like this isn't something that they're like looking for in terms of like outside validation. Mm -hmm. They don't need anyone to deem them a foodie. You can see that they're a foodie by their life choices. One hundred percent. And they know great comfort food, yes, but they also know that fancy, high quality, mm -hmm. bougie stuff as well because it is that Venusian mm -hmm. aspect to it, you know, of Taurus, right? And I feel like they are very decadent with their food and grandiose and they'll have big dinners and like there's no such thing as too many sides yeah. or like you can't order too much food when you're around them no you know for what sure I mean? and i love that like they're the type of people when you go out they're like yeah let's just try everything uh -huh. like why not no seriously you know? and i like that they take their time eating yeah they really they truly want to enjoy it mm -hmm. and I mean, I think everyone when they're hangry is unpleasant to be around, but do not be around tourists when they're freaking hungry. No. Truly, they, they need no. it as much as they need air. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah, they get real angry. Yeah, but truly, if I'm going to a tourist's house, I know they're gonna have their fridge stocked and they're gonna have great snacks. And if I say I'm hungry, they're hungry too. 100% mm -hmm. and I love that. Mm -hmm. And doesn't Taurus rule over the throat? The throat, yeah. So, of course they know what's best going down there. <laughs> <laughs> yup. You know what I'm uh -huh. saying. <laughs> okay, next we have Gemini and your superlative is favorite karaoke performer. <laughs> I love yeah. this, yes. Like, first of all, who gonna be catching these lyrics faster than a Gemini. True. Like a song comes out, you know what I mean? A song comes out, people True. are like listening a hundred times. Gemini in the third freaking listen, mm -hmm. they know all the lyrics, they're rapping in, they're like, yeah, this is my favorite song, you know right. what I mean? Like, they really right. feel so confident Yes. Um, to go up and on stage uh -huh. and like sing with their heart out. Yes. To me, they're such entertainers and I love them. I love a Gemini as a karaoke person because They'll read the crowd and be like, this is the song that's going <laughs> to set it off, baby! Yes, set the vibe. <laughs> yes. That's so true. And, you know, there's performers and then there's people who will engage yes. during that performance. Mm -hmm. And Gemini is such a sociable, engaging person. Yeah. They're not just going to be out there. Like, they may not have the best voice. Right. But their stage presence and their ability to make eye contact with everyone so they feel seen. Yes. That's a different type of performer. Because you got a Leo performer who's mm -hmm. like, me, everyone look at me. And then there's Gemini performer that's like, you, and you're special. And here's a part of the crown for you. Yes, it's fun. It's yeah. engaging. And also, like, Gemini isn't afraid to look silly, which yeah. makes it very approachable. You know, yeah. I feel like when Leo goes out and performs, like, they have practice. You know, yeah. you can tell. They're putting on a show, yeah. baby. No, sure. And Gemini is too, but... It, they don't care if maybe like they say the wrong word or their voice cracks like they roll with it you no, know they like do. that's they make it, it fun yeah. and also i feel like a gemini can just bullshit their way through anything yes. gemini can walk in late to the karaoke party and someone doesn't want to perform and someone hands over the mic to gemini gemini's like i got <laughs> right. you no, i don't know what song is going on right now but play that shit right <laughs> and that's that's a vibe yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> next we have cancer and cancer's superlative is most comforting shoulder to cry on yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, who understands your emotions better than a cancer? And in fact, so they really do enjoy when people just <laughs> go all in when it comes to expressing their emotions yes. and their sensitivity because cancer obviously gets that rep of like, oh, you're a crybaby, like you're so sensitive. So when they get to see other people and other signs express that sensitivity and that emotion, they're like, I know you had it too. Like, I'm right. not the only sensitive one. Let it out. Let it out. They enjoy it. Yes. And I they know how more. cathartic it feels for you to release. Yes. You know, so they're not really judging you because for them, that's a very normal everyday experience. 100%. I feel like if anything, they're encouraging you to feel it, say it, yeah. let it out. And that's why I think that they're some of the most comforting shoulders to cry on. Right. And also, they're absolute love bugs. I feel yeah. like a lot of cancers really just want love. So when they see that you're in need and of wanting love, they're like, oh, let me just come give it to you, honey. Yeah. You know, like, 
I always say cancers give some of like the best warmest hugs mm -hmm. you know like it feels kind of like a family member like yeah. embracing you and I just feel like yeah when you're upset that's the energy that you need very accepting non-judgmental and that's what cancer brings yeah to you I mean they're the moment. crab they, they have such a hard shell yes but like they also use that shell it's like some symbolic of how they're able to protect you. Yeah. They're very protective of the people that they love. Mm -hmm. So if you feel comfortable enough to cry to a cancer, more often than not, they're going to do everything to protect you while you're in that sensitive state. Yeah. Which I feel like ultimately makes you cry more. Yeah. You know? <laughs> no, totally. Because you know you're in a safe space and someone's really there for you. So yes. It's like when someone asks, how, are you okay? <laughs> it makes you start like, tearing yeah. up more and you're like, don't ask me. Right. No, you're so right. And I actually love, yes, it is the crab because they have that hard protective shelter. But then when you think of crab, it's that soft, warm yeah. inside, you Gushy know? Yeah, on the inside. And that's exactly what, yeah, cancers bring to yeah. you. They bring that good food and the soft blankets and the comforting environment and space. And I'm like, you think, like, you know how the moon nice words looks too. all hard? I wonder if the middle of the moon is marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like, just big Have the scientists figured out what's Yucky. the middle feeling like? <laughs> Yeah, the clash. Is it like clouds? Yes. <laughs> boink. <laughs> I think it's a boink. I think it's a boink. <laughs> okay, next we have Leo, and your superlative is selfie royalty. Duh. Yes. Leo knows their ankles, honey. Yeah. And they know other people's ankles too. They do. They just know how to find the light and make sure they're looking their best and you're looking your best. It's as the sun, well. baby. It's mm -hmm. shining. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it has enough to go around. Like yes. I feel like this can be perceived as like, oh, like I'm selfie royalty. It's all about me. And while they can have that attitude, like you said, they very much know how to make you feel seen and warm as well. Mm -hmm. So you can feel your most confident. I feel like if a Leo's around, they're gonna do if they're obviously happy with themselves mm -hmm. and they already went the selfies done yeah. <laughs> they're ready to help you out and make you look good yes but their their cup even symbolically needs to be filled first and i think that should be the case for everyone but leo very much embodies that energy of like first i need to feel good and look good yeah and then i've got enough to go around for everybody else 100 percent. you know yeah i also see this in the sense of like um when i look at my leo friends their social medias are like pretty artsy you know yeah. like they kind of very much have like a style yeah. and, like tone to them mm -hmm. so that's why i also kind of give them that best selfie title it's like it is very curated their content you know and it takes an eye like they have an artsy eye so i give them credit for that I agree. You know, when I think about it, Leos are the best at branding themselves. Mm -hmm, exactly. And it doesn't have to be someone that's in social media or, you know, an actor. Like, yeah, we all as people, every day that you wake up, you're branding yourself with how you act, what products you use, mm -hmm, you know, what you mm -hmm, do for work, like mm -hmm. whatever it may be, your relationships. And I think Leos in general are very much aware of how the world is perceiving them yes. and what message it is that they want to share with the world through mm -hmm. how they act and how they share their life. Yeah, 100%. And yeah. I always think Leos show up to impress, honey. They do. <laughs> Look good, feel good. Yes. Truly. So, I love this one for them. Mm -hmm. Very Same. fitting. Same. Next, we have Virgo and Virgo superlative is the ultimate event and trip planner. Oof. Yes. I feel like Virgo is extremely um, meticulous mm -hmm. when it comes to their plans mm -hmm. and methods. And listen, <laughs> if they're going somewhere new, <laughs> yeah. they have planned that shit oh, for damn sure. near to when like you're going to get a bathroom now yeah. and <laughs> you can go get water now here. No, true. Because they need to feel comfortable in their space and then planning out all the details makes them feel more comfortable yeah because normally they are a pretty anxious sign they are and especially when thinking about everything that could go wrong in a yes. new space in a new place they want to be ahead of that like that's why virgo is so detail oriented is because they are very much aware of their nerves even when everything is planned mm -hmm. so they can't ever go into a situation like going with the flow because yeah. that gives too much power and control away to outside factors yes and while some people love traveling going with the flow mm -hmm. 
this sign specifically, they know they're gonna have the best time if they've done enough research to feel safe. Yes. <laughs> Planned fun, that's mm -hmm. what they need. Yeah, they do. And also, I think that I do agree with Virgo Superlative because because again of their meticulousness and their methods, like they will make sure if there are multiple people, multiple people on the trip, yeah. everyone's getting all the same details. Yeah. You know, like yeah. everyone's getting the same information. Yeah. You know when you go like on a group trip, yeah. and you don't really know what the fuck is yeah. going on. Like Not that would never happen with no. Virgo. They're no. like, here's your morning itinerary. No, let me <laughs> print that shit out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised they don't have access to your phone and your alarm system. Right. <laughs> Preset alarm. Literally. Get up. Last call. Breakfast is downstairs. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I gotta love that though. You know what I mean? Yes. They know how to take her or you. This is a very acts of service, the acts of service sign, dare I say. Mm -hmm. So um, if you want someone that's gonna plan it out for you and all you have to do is listen, find you a Virgo placement yes. because it is their duty and their great <laughs> pleasure to create a very, very detailed schedule for you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, next we have Libra and your superlative is Smoothest Taco. Ooh, and yeah. as a Libra Mercury, I can honestly say that that is very correct. Yes. Um, I have weaseled my way out of a lot of things <laughs> in life. <laughs> I don't even know what other examples you need, but I feel like Libras in general, that Venusian influence, um, they truly know how to make anything sound good, yes. right, and correct. Yes. And even if they have been, even if they themselves have done something that was wrong or they're around someone that they need to protect, mm -hmm. Libra just turns on that charm and starts yap, yap, yapping away. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, a lot of people call Libra fake because they disagree with everyone and they can be pick me sometimes mm -hmm. in that sense of like agreeing with everyone. But if you really think about it, if you want to be a smooth talker and if you want to get what you want, you have to be really good at mirroring people yeah. and talking to them about what they like and maybe talking to them in a way that they're talking to you so they feel more comfortable with yes. you and they see themselves in you. <laughs> it, I mean, some call it manipulative, other people call it smart. Right. <laughs> I call it extremely charming, which yeah. is exactly what they are, like you said. And I just, they know exactly what to say to get what they want mm -hmm. in a very non-aggressive way. Yeah. You know? It it's, makes you feel they make you feel like it's your idea. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yes. I always say Libras are really good at making everything sound like a suggestion. Yes. Rather than they're telling you what to do like their sister sign Aries. Yeah. Aries is very much like, follow this and you will get what you want. Uh, most people don't want to be told what to do, Facts. even if what you're saying is correct. Facts. Libra knows that, and Libra suggests it so, 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 just smoothly that you don't even think, oh, they just told me what to do. Right. It's almost like, oh, what a great idea. Yes! <laughs> and I feel like all Libras have their own little style, mm -hmm. obviously, but they use their words to paint such a picture, and, and they all kind of have this, like, very calming like voice yeah. to like lure you into feeling like it's okay. <laughs> right, and it's safe here. It's a Venusian thing because I think I, I've always said that Torians have really beautiful voices yeah. too, and I think Libras have beautiful speaking voices yeah. as well. So I think it, it goes hand to in that hand. Venusian. For sure. Mm -hmm. I mean Venus is influenced, like Venus likes getting things. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it doesn't like to restrict itself, it likes to get all the things and you catch more flies with sugar? Is that what it's called? Uh, bees with yeah. honey? Whatever the fuck it's things, called. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want flies, but shit. Yeah. You never know. You know. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Finish it for me. <laughs> Next we have Scorpio. And Scorpio's superlative is most likely to take a secret to the grave. <laughs> like, what, what, what are we even talking about? Like, yes. You know what I mean? Truly, like, I feel like the biggest test of character is how well people can keep secrets or if someone sees something, how soon they're going to go and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Some people can't even control themselves. Facts. And that, to a Scorpio, I can say, is such an ick. Like, contain yourself, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like most people just don't know how to keep secrets. 
No, it's true. And Scorpio is so loyal, you know, like they couldn't even fathom doing that. I feel like they also understand the value of the secret because it brings them knowledge. So they keep that just in their back pocket. Sure. You know what I mean? So it's the also super smart of them. Like they keep that, they take that to their grave because it's also like a... Exactly. Something okay. they could use I mean, I kind, of, I kind of hate it, hate that for you. But yes, I know what you mean. For people that probably we don't fuck with that, mm -hmm. but people that we do fuck with to the grave because it is my ultimate act of love and service to you yeah you know like it's a safety thing and I think Scorpios know how a secret can be something that is very personal to you and we just feel like it's icky to to have something like that and to be using it so recklessly mm -hmm. so it's almost like a see how I move with your secrets I hope you can move the same way with mine if I share them with you yeah it's a power thing when you when you have someone's secret it's a testament of, I hate to say it, but the power you have over them. Yeah. And I would think that if you love someone, you just take care of that very, very gently. Yeah. Most of the time they respect that power that they hold because <clears throat> they now have that secret. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think, I don't know, like I said, this day and age... People just talk a lot and they don't really take into consideration what's private and what's not and a lot of times it's unspoken and I think Scorpio understands that yeah definitely it's a dying trait <laughs> it is a dying trait okay next we have Sagittarius and their superlative is eternal optimist yes I feel like we always like to see the brighter side of things and there usually is a brighter side of things because there's always multiple options you know i feel like to be an eternal optimist you know that there are always options that can maybe make you happier yeah <laughs> sagittarius knows that we know that to our core <laughs> right a sag is always going to choose to be happy because mm -hmm. that's the fun fun thing to do yeah um it's and easier exactly mm -hmm. exactly and i feel like sages also want to be around people like that too because that helps them keep their optimism bank at its peak value. <laughs> well, yeah, because too, like, it's it's quite literally true that if you think you're lucky, you're luckier. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think you're unlucky, and if you start thinking negative things, all of these opportunities won't flow as easily to Sagittarius, you know? So we have to keep that eternal optimist kind of mindset I think to have all the positive things continue to flow to us for sure and, I, and it's a Jupiterian thing like Sag really thinks that there is an unlimited amount of options in this world mm -hmm. and one of those options is going to lead them to a happy ending yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> and I think a lot of people look at life when they're dealt a bad hand and they just assume that like that's it yeah and I think that's the power of Sagittarius is like even if they are dealt a bad hand per se, mm -hmm. however you want to perceive that. Um, a Sagittarius most of the time won't think of it as a bad hand. They'll just think, oh, okay, so not that way, this way. Yeah. Whereas a lot of people now have to stop and stare at the bad hand and think about the bad <laughs> yeah. hand and be like, why me? Why did I get this bad hand? Yeah. And Sag is able to go to the other direction rather quickly mm -hmm. and other people will eventually move to the other direction but they're sitting there and pondering why they were dealt why they were dealt that bad hand and it takes them longer to get to the other side yeah for sure mm -hmm. i definitely agree with that analysis next we have capricorn and capricorn superlative is most likely to be a millionaire uh, yeah maybe. <laughs> honestly like where was capricorn when this list was being made they were working three jobs yes two <laughs> You know, like now I think of it, I haven't seen Capricorn in a while. Oh, actually, they just transferred to college two years early. <laughs> right, right. You know how it's like very trendy to be like go getter. Yeah. I feel like that's Capricorn's brand. Yeah. No, <laughs> actually, know? they really are. Even though 
all the odds are like stacked up against them, it feels like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, with they, that Saturn influence. Yes, they go hard to prove everybody wrong and attain what they want in this lifetime. Honestly. You know? Honestly. That's why they just don't have time for the bullshit. Right. You know what I mean? Like Saturn has taught Capricorn discipline mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. power of time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like time is limited. What do you want to get out of it? Yeah. Um, I think it's just Capricorns in general are very much aware of how time can be wasted. And they, that is truly, I feel like, one of their biggest fears is having their time wasted. So they make the best use of their time. I think a lot of people don't really think about what they're doing half the time. No, they're yeah. They're doing it because they should be. Because, I don't know. Right. Shit, why not? Right. Capricorn is sitting there and is like, what am I using my time for? How can I use my time better? How can I make this money? Yeah, and how can I work <laughs> smarter, not harder? You yes. know what I mean? Yes. How can my money make money? Yeah. They just want to feel safe. Yes. You know? Yes. They want to feel safe and protected and, you know, they know their job is never going to leave them. <laughs> right. I feel like for, yeah, a lot of Capricorns, like that monetary and like home, like those kinds of physical items bring them stability, Sa safety Yeah, exactly. It's like, that's why Cancer and Capricorn are sister signs. Cancer is very much that like emotional safety and needing to create that emotional safety in whichever home they live in. Mm -hmm. That's why they love love and they want to find a relationship. Yeah. Um, and Capricorn on the other end wants that, yeah, stability and that like earth sign kind of way of like groundedness and needing a home and yeah. having a job that they feel safe in, you know? They want to make sure that whatever they're spending their time on actually is going to give them some sort of stability. Yeah, something in return. <laughs> exactly. They're not just living, just to live. Right. <laughs> Gotta give me something back, bro. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Okay, next we have Aquarius, and your superlative is the human encyclopedia. Yes. 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 <laughs> no topic is left untouched with Aquarius. Yes. Just when you think they found their thing, there is a new thing that is found. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. And I feel like their fixed air energy makes, gives them the energy to focus in on stuff. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. unlike some of the other air signs. Yep. So they can get really into things. They can get very knowledgeable yep. on things. Mm -hmm. And again, they're still air signs, so they're willing to hop around and learn these new subjects. Yeah. You know? For sure. I was also going to say, I also feel this human encyclopedia thing because I feel Aquariuses are some of the first people to hop up and be like, well, actually, actually. <laughs> yes. I mean, and that's very human they encyclopedia are, to me. Like, to me, like, they can be know-it-alls, yeah, like, you know, correct you. they can be know-it-alls, <laughs> and I feel like because there's such a variety of subjects that they have their foot in. You really don't know when they're gonna pop up and say that. Well, actually, it's so true. Because you could have swore that they weren't into aliens, but suddenly, I mean, who am I to say that? Of course, all of them they are love into aliens. aliens. You, you could say them. that they're not into color theory, but all of a sudden right. they're into color theory. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just never know what they're into. And that I feel like also ties into that Uranus energy. Like they're the type of people that really surprise you. Yes. You know. Yes, surprise you with the facts and knowledge that they exactly. have. Exactly. And yeah, you never know what page you're gonna turn on or what you're gonna learn from your encyclopedia. No, it's true. You know? They really are so many facts. Ever changing and evolving, which I think is also that that energy that aquas are known for, which is they're very futuristic in that sense mm -hmm. and ahead of their time mm -hmm. um, because they're always learning something ahead of the curve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Last but certainly not least, of course, is Pisces and their superlative is definitely believes in magic. Frick yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> and they believe in magic because they because it's magic true. and it's true. No, I mean, are you kidding me? Okay, if you really think about it, though, really tying into it, Aquarius, I mean, 
Pisces is ruled by the 12th house, right? And that's yeah. the house of the subconscious. Mm -hmm. And how do we manifest life? How do we manifest the things we want through your subconscious? Yes. Really tapping into that voice in your head and mm -hmm. believing in the life that you want here before it manifests into your 3D reality. Yeah. That's very much Pisces energy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they're such sleepers and dreamers. And, yeah. Um, I feel like that is when you can really start to see the magic of this world is when you're able to really rest yeah and really tell yourself that you believe and that you deserve the life that you want and through affirmation work and through manifestation you're able to magically create the life that you want yeah for sure that to me is Pisces energy 100% and I also feel like too you know Pisces are such lovers and to me love is magic yeah you know and like the love they give is so healing and that within itself to me is a miracle yeah. you know and like you see how people can change with love and that is magic to me mm -hmm. you know and i think that is one of their superpowers because they're so understanding yeah they know they're waiting on you hand and foot they're yeah. waiting to like go to the deeps and darkest depths with yeah. you you know and i just think it's almost like they're so they can see the despair, you know? Yeah. But they also see the brighter, happier edge and like pull you to that. For sure. And that, again, is just like magic energy to me and that's what I think of Pisces. Yeah. And they're ruled by Neptune, the planet of fantasy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're really able to tap into the blurred lines of this world versus any other world. That's yeah. what Neptune is, is really unveiling whatever other world we are experiencing on this planet you know what i mean whether that be timeline shifts or dreaming your subconscious yeah. um there's just so much if you believe in that stuff and i feel like pisceans are the first types of people that believe in that shit mm -hmm. and i love having those kind of conversations with them right and because they're such dreamers like and sleepers, <laughs> they can go in and out of those worlds exactly like, a little bit more than the others. others. Yeah, I would say the veil is very thin for them. Mm -hmm. Just like Scorpio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That eighth and twelfth house. Yeah. That That's veil is like super thin. Other. We get it. <laughs> we here. We there. Tell me where we are. Right. Today. <laughs> exactly. I'm following. <laughs> like one of my favorite things is when I'm sleeping next to my Pisces boyfriend and we have dreams of like us being together. Mm -hmm. And our, like, it almost felt like, like we're having the same dream. We like talk about it. It's crazy. Yeah. It's a vibe. It is. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching this episode on the signs superlatives. Comment down below if you agree with your sign. Yeah. If you know somebody, did you agree with their sign? Right. I want to know what you thought I want to know it all. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes wish that we did superlatives at like my schools, but I don't think we ever did. Yeah. Like, was that like back in the day? They don't do it anymore, huh? No. They really should pick that back up. Yeah, they should. But like with cool ones. Yeah. You know? I agree. Or like zodiac ones. Yeah. So Gemini of you. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna link our socials somewhere mm -hmm. over here. Mm -hmm. We love y'all so, so, so much. much. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.